What's happening people, welcome back to episode 1, season 1 of the Become a Director of Football in Football Manager 2022. My name's Captain GG, if you didn't know already, welcome to the channel if you are brand new here. It's been a good one, it's been a good one guys, we've got a lot to run through with you, we've got 6 months worth of games to run through with you. If you haven't seen the preview to this save, then make sure you check that out, I'll put it in up in one of these corners. The general premise of this is we will only be the director of football. We will make transfers, we will hire and fire staff, most importantly our assistant manager slash manager um, and also with the manager he will take full control of everything else. We will not be involved in the day to day running of the club, we will not be involved in any training, matches, tactics, team, nothing. We don't do any of that chat, all we are here to do is be the director of football. Firing and firing and signing players. So here we are then chat, we are in the save and as you can see if you are eagle eyed, things have not gone 100% to plan. January is totally finished, we have made signings. If you remember from the first preview episode, we had an extremely tough month. An extremely, extremely tough month. But what we're going to do first is run you through what we done as the director of football and we had an extremely extremely busy transfer deadline day getting into it then chat transfers again remember a lot of these transfers would have happened irl we have spent 67 million pounds we made 40 million pounds obviously a bunch of that was um when they are leaving to go to aston villa a lot of this was already spent as well um, prior to us coming into the club a lot of the signings in which we have made have been for very, very minimal. In regards to those, we do have, first off the bat, Stylo Kerra from Paris Saint-Germain. That's our second signing from Paris Saint-Germain. Since when did Norwich sign players from Paris Saint-Germain? Only now when the captain is their director of football. But what a signing this is. A young 24-year-old German centre-back. I say young, 24. I'd still say that's pretty young. Definitely got room for improvement, but is looking very, very good already. And signing him for, I think, £6 million, and none of that, not all of that even, is up front. A lot of that is over a couple of years or due to appearances or something along those lines. So a very, very good sign in there. The next man I want to show you is Julian Alvarez. Now this guy, a young 21-year-old Argentinian striker. Look at his values already, 26 to 30 million pounds. We signed him for around about 6 million pounds again. Only about 2 million of that was up front. The rest of it was either over a certain amount of months or after so many goals and appearances. This guy is insane for the amount of money in which he has spent on him. Hopefully he can come in and even whether he be is a backup to Pookie or whether he overtakes Pookie, that's not my decision. That's down to Buvak. Buvak will make that decision as to who will play. I'd advise that he plays Julian Alvarez. Next on the list then, chat, we have another very, very big sign in. Five million pounds. And Ross Barkley has become a Norwich City player transfer listed at the start of the game chat so if you are if you're doing a Newcastle save or anything like that this is someone you should be picking up because he's incredibly cheap right we paid 2.5 million up front 2.5 million over three seasons what an absolute coup this is 27 years old now is Ross Barkley he's going to do us absolute bits playing in that central midfield I will show you the tactic in which Buvik is playing in just a second um but that is a fantastic sign-in, in my opinion. Maybe I'm being biased because I signed him. But boys, I mean, for £5 million, you've got to be pretty excited and happy with that one. Moving on to the next one, then. We have Facunda Farias. Again, another youngster we've signed for £3.5 million. Could go up to 3.8 or 4.8. This is a young centre-attacking midfielder. Now, Buvak doesn't play with attacking midfielders, so we are retraining or I hope that they retrain him to play on the left. He can play on the left, um, so I'm hoping that, that they would do bits there and hopefully get him playing out wide. But again, even if he doesn't, we'll sell him on for some profit. Another nice one to bring in there. Obviously, we've already gone through um, Kazara, a great sign-in again at left-back from Paris Saint-Germain. Other than that, I think that was pretty much it. We did actually sign Mangala on a free transfer. Um... I thought 
he would play a bit, but to be fair, I'm not really sure after seeing the scout reports after we signed him. But on a free transfer of 40 grand a week, can't be too disappointed with that. In terms of the outs, then we have made a couple of sales. Kenny McLean has left us. He's gone to Burnley. That was for literally nothing, 2.4 million. And then Tim Krull has gone to Chris Sandor for 4.4 million pounds. Again, just gave us a little bit of money to be able to move into our wages um, and make a couple of these transfers possible. So it's going okay, it's going okay, but let's get in to the results, because that's why you're all here, the results. Let's have a look at the schedule. When I said it's not been a great start, it's not been a great start, but when you look at the teams we had to play chat, you can sort of understand why. Opening game of the season away at the Emirates to Arsenal, we get beat 5-0. Now that's not ideal, uh, especially against a poor, poor Arsenal team. However, we did bounce back the next week. Amazing 1-1 draw with Chelsea. This was incredible. We can see that Timu Puki seems to be the man that's starting up top. In fact, I don't think we had Alvarez at this point. So Puki would have been starting. Alvarez we signed on that deadline day. So a pretty good 1-1 draw there. And then we had another good game against Manchester City. Okay, Man City were the better team when we look at the stats, etc. But to only lose 2-1 to Manchester City, you've got to be pretty, pretty proud of that. Bubak not doing too bad at the moment. We then drew Everton in the second round of the EFL Cup. Now, that was a bit of a tough one, in all honesty. A bit of a harsh one. But it was a tough draw, but we got to suck it up. Unfortunately, we did get beat and we're out of the EFL Cup in the second round. Is what it is. 2-0 defeat. Um, no goal scorers, of course. In terms of the team, yeah, I mean, there's a few players in there that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have chose. I need the fullback here. It, it's going to be a tough one, but we'll see how we get on. Last game before we made all those deadline day signings, a huge seven-one defeat to Liverpool. Again, I don't know what more I expected. Maybe not seven-one, three-nil would have been okay. Um, so it's been a very, very tough start to the season. But like I say, a lot of the transfers we brought in were on deadline day, so they weren't in the squads for any of these games. So it has been a struggle. In terms of the Premier League, we currently sit bottom with one point from our opening four games. Not the best, but also could have been worse considering the teams that we had to play. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to jump forward one month to see how our new signings have bedded in, see how Buvac is sort of playing with the team, um, see what sort of lineup, what sort of formations he's going for. Now we've got all of our players there. Hopefully, we can start to pick up some results. Okay, guys, so we're back. It is at the start of October. We have gone forward another month to see how Buvac is getting on. I did promise you that we'll have a look at the setup. So we can see here the squad depth. We can see that he is preferring at the moment Thomas Pukki over Alvarez. Ross Barkley is apparently our best winger. And then Alvarez, our second best winger. So we're a little bit short on wingers. That's maybe where we need to try and improve in January, if at all possible. Like I say, that's our job. This is our job. This is the screen that we're going to be spending a lot of our time on to find out where we can improve. In terms of the two central midfield roles, apparently the same guy. Um, Lise Malloy is our... Um, best central midfielder at the club Tilo Kerra who's meant to be our best centre back is also apparently our best centre midfielder Ross Barkley comes in in third and Sorensen in, in fourth and then you can see in the defensive midfield role similar players again Tilo Kerra Sorensen Lucas Rupp and then in defence Krizora is apparently our third best left back um, apparently Max Ahrens is only our third best right back and then Timo Keller uh, is also our best centre back with Angus Gunn being our best goalkeeper as we sort of already knew in terms of the tactics this is the tactic they're playing it's pretty standard um, I haven't changed any of this I don't think we need to because ultimately when we go into a game um, with the skin we're playing on we've got simulate result where basically the assistant manager takes charge of everything so if they want to change the formation they can do so if we get into the schedule, we'll be able to actually have a look at what formations have been played in game. Going over to our schedule, most importantly, you can see some results. So we left the last episode, or sorry, the last segment with a 7-1 defeat to Liverpool. 
We then had a game against Brentford, which is a winnable game, in my opinion, but we still come out on the wrong side of a 3-2 defeat. Now, that's kind of annoying that we lose 3-2 there. I just want to go into this and maybe have a look at what formation um, was played via Bufat. And yeah, he did. He played the 4-1-2-2-1 or well, the 4-3-3 with the defensive midfielder, if that's how you prefer it. And Williams and Aaron's at left and right, okay. Ozan Kabak alongside Kera. So, I mean, Barkley's playing in the midfield. Cantwell's out on the left. I mean, I don't mind this team. It's not the worst. It's not the worst team. You can see we actually win 2... No, yeah, it would have been 2-1. But they were the better team, Brentford, pretty much throughout the game. Tough one. Tough one to take. We end up on the losing side. It is what it is. If we have a look at the rest of our games, we then lost to Wolves by two goals to one. We actually had two men sent off. Not much you can do there when Mangala and Brendan Williams are both sent off before the 53rd minute. I mean, to only lose 2-1 with two men sent off is not the worst result in the world. We then managed to finally pick up our second point of the season against West Ham. Nearly had the win. Thomas Pukki got us in front after 17 minutes, but Saeed Benrahma on the 93rd minute equalised for West Ham. Let's get into it to see how it went. Okay, West Ham deserved at least a point out of that game. We expect to be the second best team a lot of the time in these games. It is what it is. Buvak, he's not, a, he's not a miracle worker. He can only work with what we give him, right? And unfortunately, he might just be struggling a little bit at this moment in time. It does look that way. I feel a bit sorry for him. But hopefully he'll be able to get our signings working. And hopefully be able to pick up some results. We stay bottom of the league. Two points from seven games. But let's jump across. What we're going to do now is jump until literally, what, maybe January. Unless things are going incredibly bad. And we need to potentially look at sacking him. But the idea now is to jump all the way to January. And see where we fare before we become alive again for some more signings. Let's jump across to January. So here we are then chat, it is the 29th of December, no more games until January now, I would obviously only have a couple of days but I thought I'd give myself those couple of days to potentially look at any improvements in which we need to make to the squad to give Buvak the best possible chance of surviving in the Premier League. If we have a, just a quick look at the team, we can see in generally in terms of stars we're doing okay, um, but you're here for the results right? You're here for the results, so let's jump across and into it. We left it after a 1-1 draw with West Ham. And we actually went on to get a few decent results. I mean, we got a draw. 1-1 draw against Leicester. And again, Leicester scoring a 94th minute goal. It was actually Thilo Kera with an own goal, unfortunately. So we still haven't got our first win of the season. But again, it is points collected. We then moved on to get a 2-2 draw against Burnley. And again, another late goal conceded, an 88th minute equaliser this time for Burnley. Seems to be the kick in the teeth that we keep getting. Always switching off late in the game, giving the opponent an opportunity to get back into it and snatch a draw. I say snatch a draw. Let's have a look at this game against Burnley, for example, and see how we got on. We actually did batter them. So Buvak actually doing the bits now and starting to get the team playing some good football definitely definitely deserved to win that game from the stats at least um after that game we played villa we lost a one nil tyrone mings had the solo goal of the game fair play it's a defeat but it's our first defeat in three so that's a plus side we then got a nil nil draw against brighton we're now two games without scoring but again looking at it it's points collected as long as we're collecting points chat i'm happy with buvac uh, moving down then, we had a 3-1 defeat to Spurs. Do you expect more? Probably not. Spurs should be beating us. I'm not too disappointed in that result. We then got a one all draw against Everton. It was our time and our turn to score late in this game. An 83rd minute equaliser from Todd Cantwell. And the game was pretty even. Could have gone either way. We edged possession. Similar amount of shots on shots on target. The XG's not too dissimilar either. Clear-cut chances, they had one extra than us. So, pretty all-round even game there. 
again happy with a 1-0 draw we could have stole that uh going onwards then in to the 27th of november played another big six and we got slapped again zara also sent off as well but it was already 5-0 at that point it seems to be these big games where we, we just can't do anything massive massive defeat this time at the hands of united also that was away at old trafford so you, again what more can we expect moving into a very very busy december then we played leeds away and we get beat 2-1 jack harrison scoring a late goal to give leeds all three points again if we have a look at this game okay they deserved it they deserved it by a mile much more possession than us absolutely dominated us in terms of shots and shots on target could have actually probably been a worse result that 2-1 not too bad we then went to play a Watford and a 3-1 defeat against a team that we should really be beating if we want to be staying in the league that's a tough one to take it's a bit of pill to swallow we did actually go one the up on the 53rd minute and then still lost 3-1 It'd be interesting to see whether we were the better team in this game. And it was pretty even. It was pretty even. They just come alive late in the game. It's unfortunate, but it happens. 3-1 defeat against Watford. But then, chat, magic struck. We got our first win of the season at home to Southampton. Timo Puki and Kieran Dowell with the goals. Adam Armstrong scoring for Southampton. But a massive... 2-1 win let's just quickly have a look and see whether we did deserve our first win again it's a pretty even game to be fair they had a lot more possession than us but that's fine um in terms of shots and stuff it's all pretty pretty even we're happy with that our first win of the campaign and that was followed up by a second win against crystal palace julian alvarez the man we signed finally on the score sheet i think for the first time this season Good to see him finally getting a goal. The fence seemed to play really, really well in this game. That obviously gave us the three points there. We then went and played Newcastle at home. And again, it's another couple of points picked up. Another point picked up with a 1-1 draw at home to Newcastle. I will take that again, conceding late on. Could have been three wins in a row. That would have been absolutely insane. Uh, we then played at home to Arsenal now. 1-0 loss. Got to be happy with that considering um, how the other game went against Arsenal. You can see it here, 5-0 defeat to Arsenal at the start of the season. So a 1-0 defeat there is not actually too bad. I think in terms of the league, we're doing okay. Um, we do have a couple of big games coming up. Manchester City, then Liverpool, but then Brentford, which is a definite must-win game. Let me know what you guys are thinking. We currently sit third uh sorry 20th bottom um on 13 points from our 20 games it is pretty tight brighton also on 13 southampton on 13 palace on 16 brentford on 17 newcastle not really out the woods yet nor everton so we're not too far away chat we're just one win away our goal difference ain't looking great however but let me know in the comments should we stick with buvac right now i'm thinking yes I think personally, just give him to the end of the season and see what he can do. Uh, I'll see what I can do in January, maybe to drum up a few sales and then obviously try and sign a few more players. Uh, it's going to be hard to do that because we don't have too many players that are sellable. Um, not for money, at least. So we'll see what we can do. It's going to be a tough one. But generally, all round, 13 points in 20 games. I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. Would, would have liked to have been outside the relegation zone but at the end of the day we are fighting relegation and that's what we're in we're in a relegation battle at least we don't have two points at least we actually have some points on the board we have a chance chat but let me know like i say in the comments whether we should stick with Booback or if you have any maybe tips or anything that you could suggest let me know in the comments other than that do smash a like if you are enjoying this series we have the next upload coming for you on sunday so drop that like. If we can go for 10 likes on today's video, that would be absolutely huge. But other than that, guys, I appreciate all your support. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, boys.